In this video, we're going to talk about a Python library to control one of these um, electric uh, drives or servo drives. Uh, either one of these two, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. So this one is a stepper drive and this one is a servo drive, but both share the same type of library. So this is gonna be, as I mentioned, this is gonna be a Python library. We're gonna control it over Modbus TCP, although you should be able to control it also over Ethernet IP. Now, the drive that I'm gonna work with today, it's a multi-protocol drive, meaning that it can be controlled over Profinet, Ethercat, um, Ethernet IP, and Modbus TCP. But in Python, it's only Modbus TCP or Ethernet IP. Now, how do I find this library? You can navigate to the festa.com website and then type in Python. Um, and then you're going to go to this section over here, uh, downloads over here, and then expert knowledge. And then you're going to download this PDF file. Now, this PDF file is this one that I already have open, set up computer environment for Festo Edcon. And basically, this just tells you how to install the library. Um, but somewhere in here, you're going to get a website um, here. You're going to be taken to this website, which is the gitlab.io, where we have some documentation for this Python library. Anyways, so before I go uh, into the Python part of this uh, video, I'm going to briefly touch on the basic configuration that we need to have on the, uh, on the drive. So we're going to start with Fest Automation Suite. This is a software that's utilized to uh, commission the drives. And uh, I already have it open, so I'm going to scan for the device. Now, before, actually, before I go into that part, let me show you the, the hardware that I have here today. So this is the hardware. As I mentioned, I have this uh, stepper drive right here. I have two Ethernet uh, cables going into it. This on the top, this is the X18 port. This is the programming port. So this is for commissioning, right? This is where we're connecting with, with the Festo Automation Suite software. So this software, right? Now, the red cable here on the back, this one, or on the top, I guess, this one is the XF1 port. Uh, there's actually two ports, one in and one out, right? So th these are switched. But um, this port is the one that would be going to your uh, Python device, whether that's a PC or a Raspberry Pi or whatever it is that you're controlling it with that's running Python. This is the, the actual communication port for process data and all of that. This one on the top is parameters. Um, and then the other connections that I have here is on the bottom, I have 24 volts going into the drive. And then I have encoder signals and power to the motor, okay? And then this is the motor that I'm going to be using. So let's go back into the software, device scan. And there is a device, Axis 1, it's called. I already had a, um, a program on this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to add it to the project. If you wanted to, you know, if this was a brand new drive, actually, let's do it as if it was a brand new drive. So you would add it to the project. So now the device has been imported, as you can see here, I'm going to click OK. And then I can go to the home option here on the top left. And now I see my axis. I'm, gonna, I'm going to double click on it. And that's going to open the plugin for that device. All righty. So there is the plugin. Now, if I was to, um, if I was to configure this drive from scratch, I would specify some stuff here, like uh, the motor, uh, in this case, this is the part number that I'm utilizing. Um, as I mentioned earlier here, I don't have any access, like a mechanical access attached to it. It's just an open shaft. Um, so I just I just declare this as a user-defined rotary of access with unlimited position and range, and then a user-defined user mounting kit, right? No gearing. There's a couple of things that are very important to set here, and that is the... Uh, communication protocol. So let's take a look. It's going to be under, I believe, under field bus right here. So you want to make sure that you have this set to Ethernet IP and Modbus TCP. As I mentioned, what we're going to be using today is Python through Modbus TCP. Okay. So keep that in mind. And then later on, 
um, actually we can talk a little bit about it now, but we need to set these factor groups as well. So this factor group, the default value is minus six for position, and this is basically the decimal point, right? So um, if you have a minus six, you would add uh, three additional points, uh, so point zero zero one. Uh, or 0 0.00001, and then minus three, it's just three decimal points. Um, Telegram, it's very important that we set it to Telegram 111, which is the uh, basic um, positioning Telegram that we utilize. And that's about it. Other than that, I mean, on the application data, the rest of the stuff, it's basic application moment of inertia. As I mentioned, I have an open shaft, so put a very low value. If you want to know more about how to commission this, this software, there are more uh, videos on YouTube on how to do that, uh, I believe on the Festo Service uh, YouTube channel. Anyways, so let's connect to the drive. I'm going to click connect and make sure that we are able to go online. And then the first thing that I always recommend is that you enable the control from the software right here, plug in PLC and then you enable the power stage and then go to this control section on the top and then make sure that you are able to jog it manually. Well, before jogging it, you have to home it. I have the homing uh, to actual position. So once I homed it, you can see that it's now at zero position, zero revolutions. So now I can home it. So you wanna make sure that you're able to home, uh, so, sorry, to move back and forth. So that's really good. That will confirm that all of your electrical connections are, are set and all that. Okay, so now let's go to the Python side of things. It's very important that you disable this plug-in uh, plug PLC control. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to control it with Python because it's still things that the Festo Automation Suite software has a control, okay? So now I'm going to go to the Signer Studio, uh, not, not the Signer Studio, to uh, Visual Studio or Studio here. What's it called? Uh, Visual Studio Code, yeah. Visual Studio Code. I al already have an, uh, an, a file or a folder open. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new uh, VENV or virtual environment. Um, so here we go, Python, create environment, uh, VENV. I'm not gonna use Conda. And then this is the interpreter that I wanna use. So that's gonna take a few seconds. Okay, so that's done. Now, one thing to clarify here, I am, I am not a Python uh, expert programmer or anything like that, but my understanding is, is good practice to work in virtual environments. That way you can have only the packages that you're gonna be using for that particular project. But this would also work with, you know, just your standard Python instance running on your, on your computer or on your Raspberry Pi or whatever. So let's make sure that this virtual environment was installed properly. Uh, let's run a hello world uh, Python program dot py and then uh, print hello world and make sure that this is running in the venv. Okay, it is, and we see it by checking this over here. So it's, it is running on the VMB. Now let's see if we if we have pip installed. Pip, it's gonna be what we use to download the library. So we do have pip installed. I'm not sure if this is the latest version, but I think this will do. Uh, clear, yeah. Okay, so we're running in the VMB. We have the hello world running, perfect. So now let's uh, install the uh, Festo Edcon library, and we're gonna do that by navigating to or executing this command. Just give me a second. Um, this command. So if I go to Edge, uh, this command right here. So pip install Festo dash Edcon. So I'm gonna copy that, and then let me bring you back to VS Code, paste, and then run that. And that should, uh, that's going to install the Festo Edcon library along with all of its dependencies. That should take, you know, a few seconds as you can see it's done now. Um, perfect. So now let's have a look at the things that we have in this library. So if I go back to Edge, now you can see it here. Um, let's take a look at these examples. Modbus examples over here on the left. 
Matpa's examples, and here's the, I guess, one of the most basic ones, position. I'm going to copy all of this, and let's take a look at what's going on in here. So copy that, bring it over to VS Code. Uh, of course, I need to create a new uh, position.py, and then paste that there. Uh, let's clear this terminal. Okay, so what's going on in here? We are importing some modules here, so Modbus, Motion Handler, and Logging. I found out that this logging is very useful. I'm going to show it, show it to you here in a second. Um, but logging, and then here it executes this logging. Basically, it's running constantly a log function in the terminal. Um, here we have to specify the IP address of the CMMT on the XF1 port. So let me bring that camera back again. This so this IP address right here is whoops this IP address right there is the one on this on this port in the back on the top okay so the XF1 port it's not this one so uh, actually that that brings me to an important topic that I forgot to mention in Fest Automation Suite which is when you specify this, uh, you remember that we set it for Ethernet IP Modbus TCP. Under Ethernet IP Modbus TCP, you got to make sure that you set uh, the right IP address. Uh, not, not the right IP address, but that you set an IP address that you know. This IP address is for this port on the back, okay? So remember that because that could be confusing. This IP address here, 192.168.1.180 is for this port the blue cable and this one over here 192.168.1.181 is for this port in the top okay all righty now it might be that when you set this ip address it doesn't immediately take it here as active so what you're going to need to do is when you change it you um you store on the device and then you restart the device you power cycle you can power cycle the device or you can do a restart device after it boots up again it should come up as active okay all righty so now that we have cleared that let's go back to vs studio so here we need to set it to what uh 192.168.1.181 so it's 1.181 and then okay what else happens here it runs this um this program or this method i don't remember how it's called in python or this function i don't know what, what it is called but it runs this and it acknowledges any faults that might be present then it enables the power stage uh for the drive it runs a homing sequence and then it executes this position task now, if I was to do a new one, position test, so we can see what that asks for. So the first value is position, then velocity, and then you can specify whether it's an absolute move or a relative move. And the default is uh, false, which would be a relative move. If you set it to true, then it would be an absolute move. So, okay, it's understandable. Let me change this position to let's say one, this is relative, and then minus five. Why is it relative? Remember, because I have not changed the default from false to true, right? Here, I'm not specifying any of that, so the default is still false. Now, the uh, velocity is, is very high here, but even if I set a very high velocity and it's not achievable, it's just gonna go at its limit. So I'm gonna set it to something like, I don't know, a uh, thousand and then a thousand here also the this one which is an absolute move i'm going to go to 10 and then i'm also going to do 1500 actually let's do a different one here let's do 2000 okay so now i'm going to i'm actually going to comment this out this logging so you can see the difference so let me bring this this view here so you can see the motor uh, where do I put it so you can see it better? Probably here. Yeah, I think that should be good. Okay, so I'm going to comment this logging portion here. Uh, Control-K, Control-C. Okay. 
and let's run this. Uh, yeah, let's run it. So I don't know if you saw that. I you probably saw it that it moved just a tiny bit, right? Why? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if I command this. For in order for us to understand the factor group, let me just command it. I'm, com I'm commenting these two lines. Let's command it to one relative, and let's see what that does. So right now, the current position is uh, position actual value is. Uh, oh, let me let me get rid of this. Position actual value here on the right. It says 0 0.009, right? So let's go back to here and let's do that again remember it's gonna execute this so it's gonna set a zero set a zero first and then it's gonna execute a motion to one but we don't know what one means it did something right i know it did something actually let's bring this logging back in so now you're gonna see what that does run it you see so what happens here on the bottom is from here, right here, it you know checks the connection or establishes the connection, reads the information from the device, does some other stuff, enables a power stage, and so on. And then it executes uh, you know a target position and it checks the current position and so on. But I'm curious to see what is the actual position. So it's like nothing. Why is that? So let's let's execute that again. One. Okay. Let's see. Here it's like almost nothing. So what if I change the factor group from minus three to zero? Uh, this is gonna re ask me to reinitialize the drive. As you can see here, so I need to reinitialize it. And that's just going to take a second. It's done now. Let's see now. Let me bring the view of the motor. So now it's turning. It's turning very slowly. Why is that? Because this is set to minus three. So I didn't say move at one revolution per minute. I said move at 0 0001 uh, one revolutions per minute, right? So it's moving very slowly, but it's, it's still trying to do it. You know, it's, it, this is still logging and it's saying my target is one and my current is zero. Let's see where it's at right now. It's at 0.72. So it should make it here in a couple more seconds or a few more seconds. It's almost there. 0 0.94, 95, 96, 97. There, made it. Okay, so now it's at, at one, almost at one. So now this is done. Let's move, let's change this to zero as well. So it's a one-to-one, -to -one. everything that I send on the on Python, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. There's no factor group. So let's do it again. So now it did it. If I go back here, uh, I just realized that you're probably not seeing the actual position as I'm seeing it. Um, let me move this here to the bottom so you can see it. Apply. Um, okay, so this is the actual position. I changed the position here in the watch list so you can see it easier. Um, okay, so let's do that again. So now it's doing a full turn and the actual position says that it is at, at one. Okay, so now let's execute this that we wanted earlier. Uh, which are these two lines. So now it's going to go relative to one, 
uh, one revolution, and then it's going to go back five, and then it's going to go to absolute 10. So let's do that. There's the one, there's minus five, and then 10. And it did it. It's done. Stopping motion, wait for drive to stop, drive stop, finish position motion task. So utilizing this library is pretty simple. Um, if we take a look at um, the logging is, is, is great. I really like this function. Now let's take a look at another example, another, um, let me see here so I can show you the right screen. Take a look at this other one. So here, let's see, for instance, velocity. So velocity, it should be approximately the same thing. I can see that it has a delay there for something. So velocity, oops. Um, let's create a new one, velocity.py, and then paste this code. All right, and then let's clear this terminal. Um, so what's going on here? It's just basically importing time now, utilizing the same modules as before. Logging is still uh, enabled. We got to change this IP address to 1181. And then it's doing the same thing, right? Clearing faults, enabling power stage, and then referencing task. Referencing task, I guess you could you could potentially eliminate that if you have you know, in your actual sequence, you referenced it uh, earlier, you don't have to do it every single time. But here, what's what's going on here? So velocity task, it says you have to specify a velocity and a duration for that velocity. So what I think is gonna happen here, it's going to try to run at 50,000 RPMs, which is not gonna do. Uh, why not? Because um, if you look at this, Let's go to axis, open axis, and then go to axis again. Um, this is the maximum velocity that you can achieve, 871. So I can specify 870. Remember that now the numbers are one to one, right? Now take a look at this. It does take negative values now because it would spin in the opposite direction in negative value, right? So it's gonna go at 870 revolutions per minute for three seconds. And then it's gonna wait a second using this sleep. And then after that, it's going to interrupt and then go to minus 500 revolutions per, per minute. Uh, for three seconds. Let's see if that's the case. Um, execute this. Okay. Three seconds have passed by. Slept for one second and then executed the other motion. I'm gonna make this bigger so we can monitor uh, this the speed. If it if it is in fact doing 170, I'm gonna do 15 seconds and then 15 seconds here too. So let's run this again. And then let's go to Fest Automation Suite. Let me uh, get rid of this. So where's the actual velocity? Right here. Velocity actual value, it's oscillating 870 and so on, but the set, the set point is 870. Now, one second for sleep, and then the set point is minus 500 revolutions per minute, and then the actual is minus 500 and so oscillating, right? Because we don't have a load and whatnot, but it works. I mean, it works fine. Let's go back here. Uh, and yeah, this is, this is pretty cool. Um, what else do we have? If we go back here, let me just try another one. Um, oops, let's go back to edge. Mm, velocity, what about this jog? Oh, okay, this is cool. So we're jogging. Copy this. Bring it over here. 
create a new job.py. Paste this. I like having a clear terminal so I can see what's going on. Modify the, uh, no, one, 181, I said, right? And then, so here's just gonna jog, what, what's it, what is this, true and false, positive, oh, okay, jog positive, it's set to true, negative is false, and then incremental, okay? Please note that the jogging motion stop if both positive and negative are equal, okay? And then the duration in seconds. Interesting. Okay, so this should jog forward for three seconds. Let's uh, let's have a look. It's jogging. Now you probably don't hear it. I do hear it, but there is a change in speed, and I'm going to explain that here in a second. So I'm going to run it again. You see, but then it starts moving faster. That is, and I've had this question before, like why is it doing that change in speed? If you take a look at here on their axis, let me just get rid again of this, this camera view. Um, on their axis, there is an option here for jogging. Um, what is it? Manual movement, there it is. Okay, so there are two phases. One, one of them is a V1, and then the other one is a V2. And this is uh, an automatic thing that it's inside of the drive. So it starts moving slowly for a, a defined period of time, and then it makes a switch to a higher speed. Higher speed within jogging speeds. But you can also change this here, these values, right? So as you can see, T1, it's gonna run for T1 or, or two seconds at 12 revolutions per minute. And then after two seconds have passed, it's going to switch to 24 revolutions per minute. And then it's going to keep going until you release that jogging. So anyways, um, I just wanted to show you this VS Code or this Python library real quick. There, I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of things that can be done with this thing, uh, especially for someone that it's, uh, it's really good <clears throat> in Python. Um, so... Feel free to drop any comments uh, on the comment section if you have anything to discuss about and uh, hope you enjoyed this video.